The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady to use our power of engineering to help you, yes, you find the things you are looking for on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the week this week? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So we had someone, um, I think they asked on social media or Discord, they said, um, <laughs> is there a good partner with volume control and headphone amp you recommend uh, for an I2S DAC? I was using the TLV 321 AIC 23, but it was obsolete. Boo! A lot of things didn't make the chip shortage. Closest I can find is the NAU 88C22. So let's take a look. Um, so this is the chip that they were using. So um, this is, you can still get it on the marketplace. So, like, you know, if you don't mind, Usually, she marketplace is a little cheaper now. This is not like when people were charging ten dollars for an op amp, which was like so sad. You can usually get chips on marketplace, like from Rochester, you know, new old stock, for as equal to or less than the original price. But maybe you still don't want to design in because there's no guarantee. Like once those twenty two hundred seventy thousand are gone, like they're gone for good. So this is. Let's take a look at what this baby is. It's a stereo codec. So it does, it's a codec, so it does input and output. It does, um, I mean, there's a big data sheet, but it does microphone and output. One thing I notice is, I'm not saying the headphone amp is like not great, but usually when I think of a headphone amp, I think of something that can do 16 ohms, not 32 ohms, and definitely more than 30 milliwatts. Um, you don't have to do a ton, but it's like usually 100 milliwatts into 16 volts, because people can have like pretty, like their Sennheiser cans, whatever. When some people people start calling their headphones cans, you're talking about 16 ohms, um, sometimes even less, which is kind of intense. Um, but they, you can use I squared C. Whoa, there's a Mic BSP. It's like a board support package that comes with a fries and a drink, I guess. Um, TSOP, QFN, linear amp, uh, looks like this. So mic in, line in, headphone out, headphone driver, uh, you know, to be honest, anything that does headphone driving is going to have volume control, digital volume control, and then digital input. So let's look at what, um, first off, you can always go to the one that's recommended. And one thing I did notice is that it had like dynamic range and signal log ratio about 90 dB. So that's, that's actually pretty good quality. Um, and it's a, it's a QFN. I figured the person who was asking for this wanted the, the quality, like the high signal noise ratio bigger number better and uh the qfn package and the cost was not you know this was a little pricey because i think again it was new old stock but something around three bucks so let's take a look um so the recommended alternative was again you know it's like two three dollars pretty good price it's a little bit of a beast though so this one has you know excellent signal noise ratio great 102 which is amazing 32-bit data but like it has like six inputs and outputs it's a little bit intense and let's see what the headphone headphone driver singular differential this one can do 16 ohms so like again that's kind of pro Digging that. Um, separation. It doesn't say the milliwatt out. Oh, there you go, milliwatt. So AC coupled, 16 ohms. Up to if you're powering it with 3.6 volts. Well, we'll do 3.3 volts because that's probably what we'll, we'll do the power with. 60 millivolts. So like a little, you know, twice as good and half the impedance. So that's nice. Um, but let's look at other options. Now, this is not a bad option, but let's look at what else is available. So let's just start with looking at codecs. And, you know, I figured because this person was like, oh, I don't want to use an obsolete part. Let's look at active, normally, normally stocking, and not look at marketplace products. Because, again, you're going to see stuff that's like, even if it's obsolete, it'll make it into the marketplace for new old stock but we want to only get like new new um resolution i don't think we want less than 16 bit so let's just do that and above 
ADCs and DACs, the one that we were looking at had two in, two out, so stereo in, stereo out. I think that's minimum. Um, let's do up to four, four. Okay, cool. And lastly, you know, I started looking at this point because I had like 120 options. And um, there is that NAU 88CC C22 that the person mentioned, and it, it does look uh, you know, nice package. There's a bunch of these like, I don't know, the, the salophobia. It's like, it's bad enough as BGA, but like there's so many BGAs. Let's filter those out. So I selected all the packages and then I deselected anything that was chip scale. Also, 64 LQFP is enormous. I'm not going to do anything that big. Or even 56 QFN. Let's look for something smaller. 48 QFN and less. No BGA, no LCSPs, no chip select, chip uh, scale packages. Oops. No chip scale, no WLPs. Okay, like TSOP is a little bit silly, but we'll um we'll keep it in. Okay, so we deselected all of the BGAs, got rid of a bunch. So now we're down to 80. And some good options. Let's sort by price. So let's say 500 quantity. So yeah, the this one, there's not that many in stock, which kind of weirds me out, but the NA, NAU 88C22 does look like a really good option. Very inexpensive. It has, you know, mixing. Obviously, if it has an equalizer, it's going to have volume control. Um, can run from 1.8 volts. Has bridge tied mode for speaker and also a headphone driver. You can operate 5 volt supply to give get more power, 1 watt output. So it's kind of nice. You have one speaker. So this is like, you know, you want to make your own Walkman with like the one little speaker and then like you can plug in your headphones. So that's kind of what, what you're doing here. Wind noise reduction. Okay. Uh, let's see if they mentioned the load. Signal noise ratio is not too bad. Again, 90. That's for the speaker output. Headphone output, 92. Looks like it can do 16 ohm loads, 20 milliwatts. So not super powerful, but maybe maybe good enough. Let's see if there's more specs on the headphone. Amplifier. You know, I should have grabbed the, whoops. Yeah, speaker is, yeah, okay, so you go 40, 40 milliwatts into 16 ohms. Okay, so it's like not, not too bad. It's actually very similar to the original TI part. Um, so it's not bad. Um, there was this one, which was fairly inexpensive. I do like Maxim I2S amps. I find that they're they're pretty good. Like I've really used the Max 98 series, the 357 for a really long time. Um, and it's WLP, but they also have a QFN. And this one doesn't have a speaker. It only had, it's very minimal. It's like stereo line in, stereo, Electret, whatever, microphone, and headphone amp out. So let's look at the headphone driver. Uh, okay, the device can do 10 milliwatts into 32 ohms. Kind of like weak a little bit. Not the worst. Not too bad, not too great. Um, and then the... Um, I did look over here at the... It's 18 bits. Um, the dynamic range is less. It's like 85. And then I looked at this other family. There's, a, there's two others that I kind of looked at. So there's the WM. There you go. I like, I've always used Cirrus for a very long time. The I2S stuff. Um, pretty good quality. Let's see. They can also, you know, they do all the dynamic ranging, da, da, da. And then let's see what their headphone driver can do. So they do a, a ground referenced. So you do, you you know, it's not floating. You I think, sorry, you don't need it to be. Oh, I guess it like, 
it does the differential signaling. So I guess you can ground reference, you don't need big capacitors. So that's kind of nice. And let's see what they say for the headphone. You have to go really far. Let's, let's see if the word load appears. Okay, load, looks like they can do 16 ohms and about 30 milliwatts. Yeah, so they're like 30 milliwatts, 16 or um, 32 ohm load. Okay, and then finally, even though it was like similar to the one we rejected because it had so many line ins, this TLV 320 AAC, uh, not the, sorry, the 3101, not the 31. Oh, five, two dollars, 24 bit, uh, same family. It's not pin compatible. But, um, you know, great signal noise ratio, completely configurable. And yes, it can do like five trillion different, um, inputs and outputs, but I think you could just disconnect them. And I like that it had, it did have a stereo, so it had stereo headphone and a speaker. And then this is the family. So you can have, there's like, you can choose the 01, 04, or 06, or 07, depending on how you want. Um, this one is kind of the, the most minimal one. And let's look for the word load. Wait, did I miss one? Okay. Um, 16 ohms, either with caps or without caps. And then let me see if I can find the milliwatt it can put in. We say put it all in like one location, the speaker, power, load, milliwatt. So again, 60. Um, so even though the... 3105 was recommended. The 3101, I think, is your best bet. I like that it has this the mono speaker. It's not been compatible, but you know what? If it's part of the 30 TLV 320 family, probably the I squared C part isn't going to be that much more complicated. They're going to have like a very similar configuration registers. So this is my pick for your headphone output, I2S amplifier at a reasonable cost and has volume control. Does a great search. Where is